All right, open your Bibles to the book of Jude. Jude, we left off of verse number four. The Bible says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw last week, we left off that these people who were promoting heresy and false doctrine, that they crept in secretly, stealthy, so that they would not be noticed uh, quickly. And uh, remember, when anybody that comes into the church, remember this, they're not going to come into the church with a big sign on them and says, Hi, I'm, I'm going to come into this church and I'm going to teach false heresy. You would recognize it right away. So what they do, they come in quietly, they come in secretly, they come in stealthily, they look good, they look like they're everything that a Christian should be and look like and dress like and talk like, but they're really uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. And uh, we saw last week, we left off with Matthew 13, where, we, where, where the Bible makes it very clear that the wheat and the tares grow together. In the church, you're going to have saved and unsaved. You're, they're going to be together. And only God knows who's saved and who's not. Uh, we as human beings, we can try to look at them and say, yeah, I think they're saved, but we, only God knows the heart, right? Okay? So the wheat and the tares grow together. So there are going to be those that come into the church. They're going to hold false doctrine. They're going to try to get in, teach their way, get some people on their side with the purpose of dividing the church. And that's Satan doing his work. Satan loves to divide. Okay, that's, we left off with that. Now I want you to notice <clears throat> that uh, in verse number 5, we see, uh, for certain men have crept in, verse 4, uh, verse 5, but I want to remind you, Jude says, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved people out of the land of Egypt, after destroyed those who did not believe. And uh, in verses 5, 6, and 7, uh, you're going to see examples that Jude is going to give us. And uh, you're going to see here their behavior. The line with their rejection of moral authority, these people love immoral behavior. And in verse 6, you're going to see that the different types. You're going to see Sodom and Gomorrah. You're going to look at the angels that... Uh, had darkness to them, and that's the examples that he's going to give. All of these examples that we're going to look at this morning, we won't get into all of them, God condemns. God is going to condemn these people. So Jude tells us about these false teachers and how it relates to sensual indulgences, and, and that's what the kind of lifestyle that they lived. Okay. Now, the one thing characteristic of false teachers, and mark it down if you take a note, these teachers are charismatic. They're charismatic in general. Now, I'm not talking about the charismatic movement, speaking in tongues. I'm talking about charismatic in nature. They're pleasant. They smile. They're happy. You would look at them and say, wow, this is a person I really want to be around. They're charismatic people. And, uh, and these people, they possess great charm and influence. And you don't think people are like that. Just watch, uh, the, uh, just watch TBN for four or five hours. You see all these preachers that smile and are charming. And they, and, but they, they're, they're rooking people and they're, all, and they're multimillionaires. Look at Jerry Swaggart. I mean, the guy was visiting prostitutes. And he's, and he's still preaching the gospel, yeah. I know, yeah. All these guys, they're, they're charismatic, and they rip people off. So you've got to be careful of these guys. Uh, notice uh, 
Jude is going to get into uh, the, the three examples. And I want you to notice these uh, three examples. Because remember, all of these false teachers, they deny the deity of Christ. Deity meaning that Jesus is God. Every false prophet denies that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. They do not believe it. Uh, and so what they want to do, they want to come into the church and try to distort that. Remember, look at 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 2. And verse 22 and 23. John talks about the deception and how people come in. And notice what he says in verse 22. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. Either he who acknowledges the Son has the Father. So these people come in and they deny that Jesus had, that knew the Father and the Father knew him. And, the, and their purpose is to get people to believe that. All right. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16 uh, will tell you the same thing. Turn over there. Titus chapter 1 and verse number 16. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being unbondable, disobedient, disqualified for every good work. And so that's what false teachers do. Now, uh, remember, these false teachers, they claim to be followers of Christ. They claim it. Jude says that by rejecting their, his moral demands, they are in fact disowning Jesus Christ and they, and they are against Jesus Christ's authority. So what's happened here to make all I've said here now these false teachers come in and they want to deviate from sound doctrine. Okay? So in order to do that, they will justify their unethical moral character. They'll try to justify it. So remember that. Now watch, now let's go back. Now, now in Jude chapter 5, uh, verse 5, Jude cites three examples of failures in the past to warn his readers of the danger that can happen presently. And all three of these examples, God put down his judgment on all three of these examples. Now, the first example is found in verse number five. There's the example of certain Israelites. But I want to remind you, though, you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not, what? Believe. So he's going to use the example here of certain Israelites. Now, Jews' introductory words were polite. But also a reminder that there was a fact here that he had to dispute. His readers knew these things once and for all. God delivered them unto the saints, and we saw that. But in this text, in verse 5, after God redeemed Israel and liberated the nation from the bondage of Egypt, you remember that story? The people failed to continue to believe God and God's promises and to trust in His power. Remember, look at Numbers 14, 11. In Numbers chapter 14, turn over there a minute. In Numbers 14, and verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me with all the signs which I performed among them? Among them. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 1, and verse number 32, I'll read it to you. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 32, he said, Yet for all that you did not believe the Lord your God. So what's happened here, God judged those who failed by destroying them in the wilderness. He let the generation die.